Inspirational Breakfast. This is Premier Christian Radio. If you're a regular listener to teacher and leader Dr. Michael Youssef and leading the way, you can't miss the fact that he has a new and important book out currently called Jesus, Jihad and Peace. Now, this looks at current world events, such as the rise of ISIS, in the light of biblical prophecy. Well, I spoke to uh, Dr. Yusuf earlier to find out more. Good morning, Dr. Yusuf. Hello, good morning, John. So good to hear your voice. Bless you. Lovely to speak to you. Is this a book that's been bubbling around in your mind for some time? Uh, it has, but uh, I, I began to kind of look at things from... Uh, you know, at, at, at this late age, uh, I began to look at things slightly from a different angle from, you know, I've, I've never been really an in-time preacher, uh, you know, with the charts and all that stuff, and right. I leave that to others, but um, uh, as I looked at what's going on in the Middle East and, and what is happening, I began to go back and examine what uh, the Quran and the Sunnah has said about uh, the, the, the rising of the Mahdi. And I was, and to my surprise, really, um, I, f- I saw the similarities uh, between those descriptions and what the Bible, whom the Bible called the Antichrist. Right. Oh. Uh, although it's only mentioned once as, with that name in um, in First John, uh, chapter two, verse eighteen. But uh, in Daniel, and of course, our Lord, the uh, Olivet discourse in Matthew twenty-four, I describe him as as a person who's going to rise into power with some religious overtones. And so I began to really examine things from that angle, uh, given the horrors that we're all seeing on our television screens uh, of beheading and so forth and the rise of a man who claimed to be the caliphate. Yeah. Uh, so I began to write that book w- 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 from those kind of prophetic right. eye- eyes. Yeah. And in many ways, you're, you're uniquely qualified to do that uh, with, with your background and your, your uh, theological knowledge as well. Uh, wh- one of the big questions that people are asking is, how did ISIS, as, as um, some are calling them, become so big and powerful in such a short time? Well, there has been a, a vacuum. The, the, you know, uh, John, just before I even start, I want to make sure that our listeners... Uh, and I love always being with you and I'm in London and, and get these wonderful calls from people. And I just want to be sure that in our discussion, they must know that in my heart, and it should be for all of us as believers in Jesus, distinguish between Muslims and Islam. Okay. It's very important. And, and particularly, not just any old Islam, but particularly fundamental Islam. Right. So it's, I love the Muslim people. I spend every waking hour to uh, figure out ways of how to share, you know, the best thing I have with them, mm-hmm. uh, namely Jesus. So uh, it, that's just, I want to establish that in the beginning, because people said, well, well you, do you hate Muslims? Absolutely not. We love them. We are commanded uh, to love them and, and, uh, and pray for them. And, and, uh, and even those people whom the, the, my Muslim friends hate, which is the members of ISIS and Al Qaeda? Right. Uh, we don't hate. <laughs> well, ex- explain so, explain to me as you understand it, uh, Doctor Yusuf, yes. the difference between Muslims and Islam, because I, I think most people would think, well, hang on, Islam is the faith that they practice. Yes, uh, but you see, there is the, the, it, Islam is at war with itself right now. I mean, we're seeing it before our own eyes. Uh, you have some courageous Muslims, like the president of Egypt, a uh, Sisi who on the new year went over and met with all the the theologians and he said you have to come with a different interpretation from the one that these people are coming up with because it's just not going to work on the 21st century and um, king abdallah of jordan these are all great guys and great great people and 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 uh, they have a very different uh, point of view and world view to those who are saying, no, we've got to interpret the Quran literally as it was for the 7th century. Mm-hmm. Most modern uh, Muslims, and many of them are personal friends, are saying, no, these were commands about killing infidels and so forth, were given to the prophets and, until he founded the religion. Once the religion is founded, those commandments, those commands are not uh, uh, applicable to us. Right. And that's really the nub. That's the difference between between Muslims and Muslims. Okay, that, that, that's... It, it, it is within Islam itself. 
Yeah, that that's helpful though. The the so-called ISIS a group have grown enormously powerful in a short time. This must have been something again that's been bubbling around for some time, almost unseen. It has, it has, and as you may remember, John, I've done my uh, studies and my doctorate at Emory University here back in the early '80s on that very subject, and I went over to the Middle East and I spent time, literally. Uh, interviewing some of, of, of the folks uh, who were militant and uh, back in the early 80s, some of them were involved in the, in the plot to kill Anwar Sadat of Egypt and so forth. So I was able to really uh, piece in my mind what I know, uh, the historic uh, rise of militant Islam, if we call it that. Mm-hmm. It started uh, back in Saudi Arabia by a man named Abdul Wahhab, and you hear that bandit about the Wahhabis. Oh yes, and he is the one who basically said, "Well, look, we got to we got to uh, interpret Islam in, in in the light not of modern day, but in the light of the seventh century, uh, Arabia, and followed the Sharia literally." And uh, from there, uh, a school teacher in Egypt by the name of Hassan al Banna, uh, uh, in the in the twenties, nineteen twenties, uh, started the Muslim Brotherhood, which right. basically a Wahhabi movement in Egypt and was ostensibly to fight colonial, uh, British colonial rule and, and, and rid their occupation of Egypt. And uh, that movement really uh, uh, gained steam and, and moved very quickly. And uh, then when the military uh, hunters uh, came to power in 52, they, uh, Nasser basically uh, uh, put them all aside and put them in prison, actually because he said that's backward-looking and we need to go be forward-looking. And uh, from that moment on, there are several movements born out of the Muslim Brotherhood. And here's the interesting part. Every subsequent movement becomes more militant than one before. Mm. Uh, from the Muslim Brotherhood came a group called um, Takfir wa Hijra, and they're still around, but they kind of faded away and gave way to a group called Jihad. And then jihad got united with Osama bin Laden and called themselves Al-Qaeda. Now, Al-Qaeda, of course, kind of uh, gone into the uh, underground. And so all of those who have been literally brainwashed in mosques about jihad and taking over Europe and so forth, all that preaching was going on for 30 years now. Uh, found as like a match into a, a, a gas a, a, a gas tank. Right, uh, right. Found their their fulfillment or their their complete uh, uh, aspiration uh, in ISIS, which is the very first Islamist movement that gained geographical grounds. Taliban did in Afghanistan to a certain degree, but. Uh, ISIS uh, got both in Syria and in Iraq, and they now have a hold in Libya, got the uh, allegiance of Boko Haram in Nigeria, and they're moving very quickly to unite all the jihadis uh, around the world and receive homage from them, as they're the only now movement that is going to fulfill the aspiration of waging jihad against the evil West. Right. and taking over. And how, how likely is it to, to spread and, and to take hold in, in many other countries? I mean, does it begin to, to threaten Europe in a big way, apart from individual attacks? Well, let's put it this way. Two million people in Indonesia <laughs> said that they support ISIS. Right. Uh, there are, as you know from the news, every day, uh, people in England and the United States and all of Europe Young people, may, young men, young women, are uh, signing up and trying to get in there to join the jihad um, uh, through Turkish border or, or Lebanese border or any of the other uh, borders. Uh, uh, borders. Uh, so it's, um, you know, it, it, it is capturing the imagination of all those who had uh, jihadi aspiration of making 
the religion of Allah to be dominant in the world. You're listening to Inspirational Breakfast on Premier Christian Radio. Good morning to you and welcome. If you just joined us, I'm John Pantry with you through till 10. Now, coming up after the news at 9, we'll hear Dr. Michael Youssef um, and he'll be bringing us a message and we'll be taking your responses in 9.30 in your call. Um, but uh, I've been talking to him a little bit earlier and we heard the first part of that uh, discussion um, earlier and uh, we will hear the second part in just a moment. But this from Jennifer in Southampton. She says, my husband got the new Michael Youssef book, Jesus, Jihad and Peace, on CD, and he'd been listening to it on his way to work. Very interesting. Most helpful for him was about the fundamentalist interpretation of moderate Muslims as being as much infidels uh, to the fundamentalists as we are. Lots of very helpful info in there. God bless you all at Premier. Jennifer, thank you very much indeed. Well, um, earlier, as as I said, we heard the first part of my interview with uh, Michael Youssef. In the second part, I asked him how he puts all these different prophecies together so might we see i don't know armageddon um as the west against um the, the caliphate well uh the, i mean it, 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 the, the once they really become powerful they're going to turn their attention on israel there's no doubt about it that's uh, something and this is the one thing that's going to unite the shiites and the sunnis mm. and right now they are uh, to a certain degree Below the surface, some of the groups are working together, like Iran giving uh, a, a place to, to al-Qaeda, which normally Sunni and Shias really don't get along, and they, they would fight each other. They have been fighting each other in Syria, uh, and now they're fighting each other in Iraq. But to a certain degree, the, the question of Israel is going to unite uh, both groups. Right. And... and- yeah. Now, all all major faiths seem to have some kind of end time prophecies. Um, right? Do, do they seem to come together, um, and do, do they line up with what you see happening now? Uh, that is the that is the most interesting part about uh, how the you know the Muslim view of um, of uh, of the Mahdi. Uh, of course, again, y- you find a slight variation between the Sunnis and the Shiites. For example, uh, the Sunni believe that the Messiah is coming and it's going to be Jesus, uh, but when he comes, he is going to embrace Islam and turn against the Christians uh, uh, and, the, and the Jews. Right. <laughs> uh, the Mahdi, uh, the Muslim Mahdi, would, uh, would lead, uh, in fact, it says that he's, he will rule the earth uh, as the final caliphate. Uh, uh, he'll be the political and spiritual representative of Allah on the earth. Uh, Mahdi is to be a man uh, of war whose path uh, will be red with blood of unbelievers, uh, according to some of the writings in, the, uh, in, in Islam. Right. Uh, he will arrive at the same time as uh, Isa returns, talking about Jesus. <laughs> right. And um, Isa will, will descend uh, uh, to the earth in Syria, east of Damascus, dressed in yellow robes, and he'll be assisted by the Mahdi, <laughs> uh, who will rule over the earth for seven years. Believe it or not, that's, that's in their writings, right. um, in the Islamic uh, traditions. Uh, in the end of the Mahdi's rule, there will be a day of judgment uh, for the entire human race. So there are you know, certain similarities. similarities yeah. I, I, I'm not drawing conclusions, but no. I'm just saying, I think, uh, any person who needs, you know, we all need to be informed uh, what those possibilities are, but right. also at the same time, they should not distract us from our most important task, and that is to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to everyone who would listen and not be afraid. Right now, I just saw the survey in the British press uh, last week uh, about, uh, uh, was, was conducted by uh, uh, you know, 1,200 people. Christians who are said they're afraid to, sh- to, to speak and even admit that they're Christians at the workplace, lest they'll be ridiculed. Yeah. I know in your own ministry, Dr. Yusuf, you, you've seen um, tremendous uh, conversions going on all around the world among Muslims, many often, um, many times, them having uh, visions and dreams uh, of Christ yes. and, and, and coming to Christ quite spontaneously. And, and every single day, we have reports coming from every corner of the globe, particularly in the Middle East. And now we have a, uh, a, a channel uh, called Shine Kingdom in, uh, in Indonesia in 22 million homes. 
Um, and we, we, we are hearing every single day people coming to Christ and maybe they see a dream or a vision and then they tune in and, and what our channel does is basically help instruct them in the Word of God and, and disciple them and then have people on the ground who can meet with them and help them. Uh, so we're seeing some God doing great things. So where sin increases, grace also abounds. <laughs> well, bless you. It's lovely to talk to you. The the, the book, uh, once again, is called Jesus, Jihad, and Peace. Uh, it's very detailed, and uh, there's a great deal more information about Bible prophecy and uh, much more in there, and uh, we highly recommend it. And Dr. Michael Youssef, thank you for writing it, and thanks for talking to us today. Thank you so much, John. Looking forward to seeing you. Dr. Michael Youssef there. Jesus, Jihad and Peace is available uh, by going to ltw.org or you could call this number 0800 432 Passionately proclaiming uncompromising truth. Leading the way with Dr. Michael Youssef thanks you for your faithful support through your continued prayers and gifts.